everyone. My name is Sarah. This is Mother Goose Knits, my podcast where I talk about knitting, spinning, sometimes quilting. I'm a mom of three living in Buffalo, New York, and thanks for stopping by. I haven't done a podcast since I think August. Um, and since then, I went to the Western New York Fiber Festival, <clears throat> which was not a bust. I got a lot of cute things, but I really didn't get to spend any time there. I finished up a few knitting projects, one of which was one I started in spring, or actually in June. Yeah, I started it in June. So right at the end of spring, and it took me all summer to get it finished. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like I didn't get anything done. I felt like I probably had too many projects at once that I was trying to finish and I was just trying to get through all of them. And I'm, I currently have one whip on the needles that is kind of a self-drafted pattern. So I'm not um, trying to get it done super quick because I just want to make sure that I'm doing it right. Um, but yeah, I pretty much have almost everything off the needles and now I have the mindset of the holidays. So I've got like Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's on the brain, and I don't even feel like knitting any like autumn related <laughs> items anymore, which makes sense because in by the time I finish them, uh, it'll be time to wear them. It'll be winter and it'll be, you know, Christmassy holiday time. All right, so first finished object is Hello by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, and this, I think, is the lacework version of the Easy V sweater. It's basically the same construction, just instead of color work zigzags here, it's lace. Um, and I knit this in Lion Brand Feels Like Alpaca, which is not alpaca. It is uh, acrylic. So if you're allergic or vegan, that is one you can take a look at. I Do I recommend the yarn? I don't know. It's got this cool effect where it's got these little, I guess it's supposed to look like guard hairs or just fuzzy animal fiber. So it has a neat little effect. The thing is, it's it's very drapey and it's supposed to be drapey because it's supposed to be like alpaca. However, I just feel like if you wanted a drapey yarn, instead of going for acrylic, you should probably go for something like a bamboo, a bamboo rayon, um, instead of acrylic. This is also a two ply, so it was very splitty when working with the um, lace work. I did not like using this yarn with the lace work at all. It's very annoying. Let me show you the whole thing. Um, it's got lace work on the sleeve. Now the stitch definition is not great. I wasn't expecting it to be. Um, this was kind of stash yarn and it was the right color that I was looking for for the sweater. So I used it. I actually picked this yarn up because of a buy two, get one free deal at Michael's. I needed two balls of a different kind of yarn to finish a project. And so I just grabbed this because it was free. And then when I was looking at this pattern, I thought, well, you know, I should probably use that nice rust colored um, yarn I got because I've been wanting to use it and see what it was like. And the finished product is really nice. It's a nice fabric. It feels really soft and drapey. I just didn't enjoy knitting with it necessarily, but I like the finished product. I think her yoke design or the neck design is really nice. It's got this sort of saddle shoulder thing going on and it's this cute V-neck. Uh, I like the construction of it. It's really nice. Um, and flattering. All right, next project. I put my coffee there. All right, my next finished object. This has been in the works since June. 
Uh, I thought it was going to be a quick knit, but it wasn't. <laughs> I also procrastinated. Um, it is camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear. You can actually cl very clearly see on the bottom where I switched skeins. This yarn was Arukenya Itata Solid. This had been in my yarn stash for more than 10 years. I bought it at a now closed yarn shop in the Hudson Valley. I think it was a Ben Franklin's actually. They had good yarns of the Ben Franklin's. Uh, and it just sat around. I tried making socks with it. I tried making the Mizzarina t-shirt with it and that didn't work out the way I wanted. Um, so I just used it for this. And I like how it turned out. Um, after blocking, the, the yarn gets a little bit softer because it was a bit itchy. So this is the leftover. I had two skeins of this. The color is in 2020. Uh, it is 70% superwash wool, 15% silk, 15% bamboo. Um, and they were 100 gram skeins. Uh, and I have quite a bit left. Uh, they are pretty much an entire skein of this left. I only did a couple inches at the bottom of the tank top. So uh, I might revisit the idea of socks. I have an itch to knit some socks lately so I'm gonna see how that goes but that was this um the yarn is nice a little bit itchy uh but the color was beautiful that's why I bought it I feel like everybody's done this pattern it's very popular I made the um straps a lot shorter than I thought I would need them to be because I know they would stretch and now it fits perfectly I actually didn't even gauge swatch this too I didn't even gauge swatch this, so I'm lucky it fits because it took me forever. This ended up being my car knit. Um, and so obviously during school drop off time, I would knit this, but then obviously in, in summer there was no school. So it kind of just sat around. And then when school started again, I picked it up and finally finished it. And I'm really glad it's done. <laughs> I would like to say that I'd knit this pattern again, but I did not enjoy the rib at this small of a yarn. This is fingering weight. I don't really like fingering weight knitting. I Sport weight is about as small as I really want to go. Uh, although the fabric does turn out really nice with fingering weight. I don't know, it just takes so long and it feels like it's just never gonna end. So I prefer something a little um, bigger. In fact, I think I'm gonna try and build up a good selection of worsted weight yarn in my collection. I feel like I have a lot of different types and different weights that never match each other. Um, so I'm going to like make it a priority, I think, to find some worsted weight patterns and sort of buy the same type of yarn for each project. That way, when I have little bits and bobs left over, I can use them for color work without having such a big difference in like fiber content when I mix them up. You know what I mean? All right, that is it for finished objects. Um, oh no, I have one more finished object and it is a quilt. So I'm just going to show it quickly. I only have one sewing project. So if you don't like um, quilt content, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but I finally finished my son's baby quilt. I, which is, I'm going to go stand back. So he's here. And here's the back. Got a tag. Okay. 
So this is the Buzz Quilt uh, designed by Lori Holt. And the fabrics are B Plaid's collection by Lori Holt. Lori Holt has such cute fabric. She like if you're doing uh, a kids quilt, Lori Holt definitely has really it's like cute but not too cute fabrics. Um, lots of really nice colors. This was a pattern that came with a quilting subscription box, which all right, it was this. The Buzz quilt pattern. It was April 2022 <laughs> uh, for, what was this called? The Fat Quarter Shop uh, So Monthly or So, so there's a <laughs> Fat Quarter Shop's uh, quilting subscription box. I can't remember what it's called. I don't subscribe to it anymore. It came with two charm packs of this B plaids. I thought this pattern was really cute, especially for a baby boy. And I did not purchase the background or the border fabric um, from the collection. I just went to Joann's and I selected something that looked similar and it had similar colors. So like this yellow is just slightly brighter than the yellows in <clears throat> the fabrics. Let me find one with a yellow. Yeah, there's a yellow here and that's more, <clears throat> more orangey. See, it's definitely a different yellow, but I feel like the pattern worked well. It blends well. Um, and this blue, is sort of a blue green So I feel like that matches pretty well. Like it blends, you're not gonna notice that it's not from the same collection. <clears throat> so that's why I ended up doing, and Joann's has, often has quilt fabrics on sale. I think this was um, $6.99 per yard. Now, this advised a half a yard for binding strips, which is reasonable, um, but it said, two and two thirds yards for the backing. I probably have at least twice as much backing fabric that I needed for this. I could have, a uh, one and a half yards would have been more than safe. Now the quilting, I just did a swirly kind of up and down design. You can see I don't know if you can see, hold on. Me and this coffee today, me and this coffee. I keep picking it up and then I have to put it back down. I don't know if you can see on the back a little bit better, but I kind of just did like a, kind of like how a bee would fly around. <laughs> um, but that I find is just the easiest way to do quilting. I did the same thing on my middle child's, my youngest daughter's uh, unicorn quilt. I just swerved back and forth because that way it's random. It doesn't look out of place if you mess it up. Um, it's easy, you know. I'm trying to do some straight line quilting on this one quilt I have next to me that you can't see. And if you mess up the line, you can tell and that's very annoying. So just the swervy back and forth um, works really easily, gets done quickly. The binding, oh my gosh. The binding is like the most annoying part because you're at the very end of the quilt, you just wanna get it done. And I always sew the binding strips together wrong. You're supposed to sew them at a diagonal and then fold them out. Um, and I always do them the wrong way. <laughs> So I had to unpick them a bunch of times. It was really annoying, uh, but it is done now and it's done in time for my son's first birthday, uh, which is in a few days. So that'll be his present. I'm very excited about it. For my whips, 
I don't really have any whips. I have swatches. I do have one whip. I lied. <clears throat> they are all in here. This is my whip. I think it's at the same spot basically that it was before. This is a self-drafted cardigan in a moss stitch slash seed stitch. Um, that is it. I'm just working on the yoke, the increases. I find, I'm doing this with Plitolope in the color Frostgrass. And it's got a nice texture. Um, some of the wool hairs fall off while I'm knitting this. And so I don't like knitting it in bed, which is partly why it's getting so, uh, it's getting set to the side. I was also getting bored of the moss stitch and I was considering um, changing it up and doing a different texture, but, but I have to pull out my um, stitch dictionary for that, which is under this pile. So that has not happened yet. I will probably pull that out today. So to make this cardigan, <laughs> I have been taking a look at, or I've been following this knitting from the top. Um, Andrea Mowry recommended this book. So I found a used one on Amazon and I think it is fantastic. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that book is, has been really helpful. It tells you, you know, where to measure, what to measure. Um, definitely a good reference if you're trying to draft your own patterns and don't know where to start. Um, so yeah, that is my one whip. And the other two that I have here are actually swatches. For my swatches, I have been dying to use some of my hand spun, especially this pumpkin patch colorway that I finished up. So this, I believe I showed this before, but I'm not sure. I might have just showed the fiber, but this is um, Blueface Lester in the Pumpkin Patch colorway by Friends in Fiber. Oops, let's cover our faces there so we can get it. It has orange, green, and this like greenish yellow. Um, and I did a fractal spin on this one. I had eight ounces. Um, and so here, check it out, bud. Yeah, so I've been dying to use that. I just don't know what to use it for. I've been looking at color work, yoke sweaters, and just wasn't finding anything. I'm not sure. Like, I'm also, like I said um, before, I'm not... I'm also like not in the mood to do fall knitting. I'm really like gearing up for holiday, like Christmas sweater um, designs. And I have some in mind, but like this is not the color palette that I'm wanting to use for that. So I'm not sure if I even wanna get started on it. And, and then I was considering like maybe because it's hand spun and it's uneven, I probably shouldn't do a sweater. I should do um, like a hat or just something simple. And I've been wanting, I also really wanna make a hat for, for the festival coming up. Um, so I did a swatch and it was the, was it soft and squishy? Uh, cap by Pearl Soho. I, it's like a free pattern. It's a basic hat. And I, I believe this is a half fisherman's rib. I'm not sure. It's You knit in the stitch below. Um, but I did a swatch. Oh. <laughs> and there it is. And I'm just I love it. I and I I don't want to make a hat with it because I love it so much. I love this gradient. 
This, this, okay, this bit right here was at the end of a bobbin and I just plied it back on itself um, from a, a very small center pull ball. This is the entire bit that was left over on the bobbin. Um, but I just, I love how the gradient worked. The gradient came out. Um, and I just, I want to do a sweater with it. I just can't, I don't know what pattern to use. Um, <clears throat> but I also don't want to treat it like it's so precious that I can't use it ever, you know? And on top of that, I'm just like not in the mood for fall sweater designs. And I, I don't know what color to pick as the main color. Like if this were to be the color work, I don't know what I would pick because the orange, green, or yellow would disappear if I picked orange, green, or yellow as a main color. And I'm thinking about different browns. Like I have this um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool right here in this dark brown color that might work. It would be low contrast but maybe that's what I want. Um, I don't know. I'll have to do another swatch. I might have to rip out this swatch even though it's so squishy and nice. Anyway, that was the one swatch that kind of was a bust. The second swatch that is also a bust was um, this one, the Heritage Sweater by Woodlands Knits. I, this has been in my queue, well, not in my queue on Ravelry, but like I have bought the pattern and I wanted to knit it for quite a while. I bought four, no, three Woodlands Knits patterns. I bought the Loki Cardigan, the Fisherman's Raglan, and the Heritage Sweater. Um, and this is the last one that I haven't knit yet. I just, the pattern called for Drops Alaska in light brown, dark brown, and black. But the pictures, the picture that I was drawn to, it looks very gray. Um, and I just wasn't sure if I wanted, it just didn't seem like it matched. I don't know if there was a filter happening um, but the drops Alaska in the light brown and dark brown just seemed like that wasn't what I was looking for. So I ended up buying Cascade 220 in Doe Skin Heather Jet. Ooh, ooh. Do you want to get down there? Here. You don't want to check this out? Yeah, it's squishy. Um, cause I thought it might be a little bit of a cooler tone, grayish, well don't eat it, brown that might match a little better. Um, but I, I just, I don't like this color for this pattern. I just didn't like the color combination. I don't, this is not what I was hoping for. So I think I really do want just a gray. Maybe a slightly warm tone gray, but if I'm gonna do the black, I think I'm gonna do a gray, a dark gray, and the black. And I think that'll be really nice. I'm I'm even considering adding mohair to it because I kind of want it to be a little more plush. Um I don't know. I hope since this didn't work out, I really hope that I We'll still have the motivation to knit it at some point. But yeah, those were my two swatches. I've nixed both of them and I don't really know exactly what I'm doing now. <laughs> I was so excited to finish this and so excited to finish the tank top that I, because I wanted to like cast on something new and now I don't know what to cast on. I'm so tempted to go online and order some yarn for some of the projects I'm thinking about working on. One of which is the Cassiopeia cardigan. And I couldn't tell you who the, Jarbo, Jarbo, Jarbo. Uh, <laughs> they have a bunch of free patterns. Um, 
and they're really nice actually uh i was looking at one where it's got all this this kind of starry color work and it's like a green cardigan and i think it would be really cute it's cropped i think it'd be really cute and perfect for christmas um and so i kind of want to pick up yarn for that but i'm trying to wait because we're going to the new york sheep and wool festival and i want to just see what they have there I'm a little concerned it's going to be very expensive to buy yarn there. Uh, we went to the Western New York Fiber Festival and I had some yarns like listed out and quantities that I needed for different projects I was thinking about working on. Um, but all the yarn was like $30 per skein and I just I can't do that. <laughs> so I actually just ended up purchasing fiber from the Fiber Festival which I suppose I should show in my acquisitions. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna wait to purchase any yarn till I go to the festival, see what they have there. Then I can, you know, go from there and work on some holiday sweaters after that. And if I still have to order some more Cascade 220, then I will do, it, do that. But acquisitions. So at the Western New York Fiber Festival, my daughter got sick while we were there. We got in, paid to get in, went in a circle once. Um, then we went to the, we went to the Stitch Buffalo booth where they were making jump ropes. They have a little jump rope. Uh, you twist the yarns around and then you ply them together and it turns into a nice big jump rope. So we were doing that and my daughter got sick as that was happening. <laughs> so we ended up leaving. And as we were driving out of the parking lot, uh, we saw that we were right across the street from the Fisher Price headquarters and they do have a toy shop. So they wanted to go to the toy shop. <laughs> so despite the fact that my daughter was sick, she was feeling a little bit better. I was thinking it might've been car sickness from driving. So we stopped at Fisher Price, got some toys. Then they seemed to be feeling better. So we decided to run back into the Fiber Festival just so I could quickly pick up a couple of things. Um, so I really didn't get to look around. I kind of just went in, got a couple of things that I knew that I wanted, um, and then we left. So I stopped <laughs> at the, what is it? Um, Fox and Hound Merino booth, uh, which is a local um, farm, or a local shepherd. And I picked up a Newbie Wool Wash and Comb Kit. She had a bunch of fleeces, like a, ribbons attached to them, like fancy fleeces that had won some, uh, so she had a bunch of fleeces there, which looked really beautiful, but I just did not have time to look at anything. I've never bought a fleece before. I also don't have any tools to process fleece. So when I saw this little pack here, it came with one pound of merino, of raw fleece, merino from a sheep named Lily. It came with 3D printed wool combs and it came with a wash bag, wool wash, um, and that was it. Yeah. So I decided I was just going to grab that because it had everything I needed. I really wanted to take a look at wool combs and spinning supplies while I was there. And they did have a booth with um, some fancier wool combs, but I was also just not sure exactly how I wanted to work with fiber when I'm spinning. I wasn't sure if I want to do a blending board, wool cards, um, combs, hackle. I didn't know. So I didn't want to spend, you know, $200 on wool combs if I wasn't sure if I was going to like that or not. So these are about like $25, $30 for these 3D printed combs, which are here and it has some fluff on it, but they're basically 3D printed with nails. Um, 
They look a little rudimentary with the nails, but they work really nicely. And especially as like a beginner tool, um, I've been really happy with those. So I got those. Um, and here is the wool bag, the wash bag and the fleece. I did wash the fleece. I think I may have agitated the fibers a little too much, but in general, it's really nice. Um, you can see some there. They're kind of like mm, a little more stuck together than I would like, but I don't know. It's my first, my first foray into processing fleece, but I've got a few little fluffies, fluffy nests in here. Um, and I was really enjoying working on that outside when it was a little bit warmer. It's just starting to cool down. I could comb, comb some wool while this guy wandered around and yeah, so I've been enjoying working on that. And I'm debating on if I should purchase a fleece from New York Sheep and Wool or not. I might just take a look. It seems like a lot of work so far and I haven't really put much of a dent into it. So I don't know if I want to overwhelm myself with a larger fleece. This is just one pound. Um, I'll probably end up with half that by the time I'm done combing. Um, but yeah, still very exciting and fun to try new things. Now the second item I got, the second and final item at the Western New York Fiber Festival was this roving. This is from Black North Fiber. Uh, and this, I believe, is Shetland, from what I remember. Shetland in the colorway Autumn. And I just loved this color. I saw it and I was like, oh. there's all these like bright colors that are really beautiful, but this like brown neutral. But I got that fiber and I am currently in the middle of spinning it. I have split it into two. I got eight ounces. I split that into two um, and I'm working with one half right now, just spinning that up. All right, so my next acquisition, um, spoiler alert, if you get the Hello Yarn subscription, uh, fiber subscription, <clears throat> this is the September 2023 uh, coordinate pack. So if you don't wanna see that and you haven't received yours yet, uh, definitely click off. But this is the Willow the Wisp collection. Uh, and it is six colors. It's got this orange, a violet purple, a navy blue, a teal, a light teal, and a light purple. Um, so those are the colors right there. Uh, and I got this because I wanted to um, experiment with a blending board. So I have my wool combs and I'm kind of processing raw fleece and seeing how that works out and how much I like that. Um, I also really like natural colors. Um, so I figured the wool combs are a good idea, but I also kind of want to experiment with different colors and designs of yarns even though I don't think I particularly love um, multicolored yarn, I definitely want to spin to knit, um, to knit with. So I've, you know, spun some just solid color. Like I have that gray Corydale, just pure gray. And I'm doing this uh, autumn colorway of roving, which when you spin it up, it basically looks like one neutral color with some, a little bit of color interest, but it's basically one color. Um, but with this, I wanted to see what I could do with the blending board and see how much I enjoyed doing that and maybe what I could do with some multicolored yarns. 
I also thought that maybe it would be good to just spin up some mini skeins for different color work projects. That way I'd have just a bunch of little hand spun colors. And I'm not quite, I don't, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this. Cause I love the orange. I love this blue, but I kind of want to blend them together. I feel like I should blend them together just to experiment and, you know, see how I like it. Even though I want to keep some of the colors like single on their own, I should probably just get a little experimental because I got myself a blending board, a DIY blending board. Um, I just went on Amazon and got a nice, a fairly decent but inexpensive cutting board with these rubber feet on the back. There. So it's a nice cutting board and I almost felt bad <laughs> staple gunning the fabric, the blending, or the, was it carding fabric? These, the thing with the tines. I almost felt bad staple gunning that to this. Um, but I've got a nice little blending board. Uh, and I would say this ran about $35. So the fabric that you stable gun to the board was about 20. I wanted the 12 by 12 one. And then I got a um, cutting board for uh, about $15. I could have got one cheaper, but I really wanted the rubber feet on the back um, so that it wouldn't slide around when I'm using it. And I have yet to use this. And I actually have um, some more tools. At the Western New York Fiber Festival, at the same booth, the Fox and Hound Merino booth, they were selling these really inexpensive, they're not cards, what I, would you call them flickers? Um, they were basically the same price that you would pay for like a dog brush. Um, cause a lot of people use, uh, dog brushes, uh, to work with like blending boards and fiber cause it's inexpensive. And these, both of these were $15. So I got these there. I like the wood pattern, but I figured I could use these just as flicker brushes if I needed to get some dirt out of some of these locks. And I could also use it um, for blending the fiber here, um, which I have yet to try. So I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube on blending board techniques like roll eggs, um, how to diz off a blending board and doing mini bats. And I'm just kind of mulling over what I might try doing next. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of excited. I've got a nice little color palette to start with right here. And maybe I'll come up with some fun multicolored yarn. Yeah. So that is all I have. So thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.